Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. So glad you could join us. Hope you're all doing great today. Today we're taking out the Tier 7 ARP Miyoko, which is exactly the same as a fully upgraded normal Miyoko. It came from a event. It's the tie-in with the anime series. Uh, it's... Yeah, there's no real difference other than the fact that um, it's narrated by a small Japanese girl. So if you don't speak Japanese... Um, yeah, um, one of the things you got to keep in mind is uh, she's going to be talking to you in Japanese, and uh, when she like warns you that torpedoes are coming in, or that you took a massive hit, or something like that, um, yeah, you're not going to understand what she's telling you. So something to keep in mind. Uh, it seems really minor, but that is a kind of a, a tactical thing there. Otherwise, it's it's great ship, uh, both the Miyoko and the ARP. Some characteristics of her: uh, decent detection detection range, uh, thirteen point one currently on my ship right now. And that is not with the Captain Perk. Uh, it has very, very powerful guns. Um, and typically, uh, typical of the entire Japanese cruiser lines, uh, you're generally just going to be spamming high explosive shells. And, and pretty much nothing but that. Uh, they do fantastic damage, which you'll see in this video. I don't think I switch over to AP at all throughout. Uh, though, honestly, if you catch, uh, especially a medium range or so, uh, an enemy cruiser that's giving you full broadside, by all means, switch over to the AP shells. You, you'll you'll be surprised how much damage that it actually does. It has a... Uh, I would give it below average AA. I do have the, uh, the air defense ability module on it, and uh, it does help, uh, mostly just for self-protection. It is fairly maneuverable, and it has a pretty decent top speed, too. It also has uh, fantastic torpedoes that go 10 kilometers they're pretty damn quick they do a lot of damage unfortunately the firing arc for them uh basically you can only shoot your torpedoes at things behind you uh more or less uh, so that's kind of unfortunate but it is nice to have that option there just in case uh it, it, you, you'll, you'll catch people off guard with them every once in a while and the fact that they go 10 kilometers sometimes if you have a lot of foresight you can really set up a torpedo attack uh the guns Let's talk about the guns. The, the the rotation rate, and you can kind of see it on my ship. I'm not turning, you know, it's just, it. those guns are slow. Um, and with as maneuverable as the ship is, any kind of evasive maneuvering that you do will set your guns off to the point where you can't return fire until you let your gun turrets catch back up. So one of the tactics that I will use is I will make an evasive maneuver, and then as soon as the, the uh, incoming rounds splash past me, or the, the threat is no longer there, I will turn back to where my turrets have an angle. Uh, the other unfortunate thing is they do not have the best uh, firing arc. And there's a nice 7.2k damage on a tier 8 turpits just from HE. So that's what I was talking about, the, the, the sheer damage of these things. The fire rate is not the best in the world. Uh, I do have the um, the module that increases the turn radius to the uh, turrets, though it's kind of hard to tell because they're so slow. Uh, the downside of that is it adds a second or two onto the fire rate, which sucks, but in this ship in particular, I feel like that's one of the few situations where it's really justified. Another nice thing about the guns is the uh, HE, which you're going to be spamming a lot, has a really high rate of uh, catching things on fire. I think it's something absurd like 16 or 17 percent, and that's not even with Demolition Expert. It's very, very nice. It also has pretty good range, so what I'm doing here is I'm just staying, and you can kind of see it on the mini-map there. I'm staying at the same range, basically, with my battleships. It does not have the best armor in the world, especially towards the rear of the ship. Uh, you will often get citadeled if you expose the, the tail of your ship. Uh, it does not take broadsides well at all. It's very easy to get deleted very quickly without realizing it. Uh, here we're getting a torpedo, and you'll kind of see how much damage this this torpedo will do. Ouch. That was a 13,000 damage torpedo. That's almost half my life in one shot. Um, yeah, from one torpedo. And that's from a Hatsuhara. That's a tier 7, so that's an equal tier Japanese destroyer torpedo. That's uh, really, really unfortunate. So yeah, it does not take damage very well. It does, however, 
spam high explosive shells like nobody's business. The rate at which you will catch things on fire is downright terrifying. Um, by the time they put something out, you're already setting two more fires on its place. And that fire damage adds up very, very quickly. Now, some cruisers are very good at killing destroyers uh, because of their high fire rate, like the Atlanta comes to mind and the Cleveland. Some are very good at killing other cruisers because they have very good AP uh, routes. I would place the, uh, the German and Russian cruisers in particular into this line, but also the U.S. cruisers as well. They're all very good against each other. Uh, the Japanese, because you're spamming HE all the time, you're not the best at killing cruisers, though it certainly is a possibility, uh, especially if they get within medium range and you can switch over to AP. What they truly excel at is lighting battleships on fire over and over and over and just making yourself as annoying as humanly possible. Um, I now have this tier 8 turpits that I uh, did some significant damage to early. Uh, I have his full attention now. And I just avoided all the shots. So I just made a tier 8 battleship not only take more damage from me, but also waste his entire 30 second salvo of shells on me and getting zero damage out of it. Meanwhile, he's ignoring the rest of my team. Uh, so that is a multiple win in all regards. Something else to keep in mind is because of the slow turret traverse, you really have to pick and choose when you're going to uh, switch sides. So, I mean, I made a long, long pass where I had all my guns pointed off to the port side there. And then I was getting close to the map. It looks like most of the other enemy team is either out of range of me or is behind the island. And I figured, you know what, now's the safest time to make a complete turn. And I had to avoid those turpid shells anyhow. Let's go ahead and start turning. And it took a good long while for those turrets to catch back up. And you can see that even at a medium angle here, almost all of my guns, three out of the five, can't actually shoot. Uh, the firing angle is not the best. You really do have to show a lot of your broadside if you want to get all of your shells on target. Thankfully, it is maneuverable. So, again, what you want to do, and you'll see me kind of do it uh, not on this Bajoni here, but uh, when I switch back to these targets ahead is I'll, I'll swing my uh, ship about so that I can get all my guns to bear, fire my shells, and then swing right back to give high angle. And I'll just kind of bounce back and forth between those two states. And again, I'm not a frontline fighter, so I'm just trying to keep range. <laughs> There's Mr. Turpit still firing at me. I kind of think he, he took those initial shots very personally, um, which is hysterical. Man, somebody just lit that Bajoni up. Yeah, that uh, that Turpus doesn't like me. He, he But he just wasted another full salvo on me, and now he's behind an island where he can't fire, which is fine by me. So now I've got a Pensacola and a Warspite, and the Warspite's also shooting at me. All these targets, and you choose to fire at the Miyoko. It does have a bit of a reputation for, for being a pretty soft target. Uh, it is pretty easy to kill Miyokos. It's not paper thin like a Russian cruiser is, but it's been in the game for so long that people have kind of learned that, you know, yes, it's a very killable cruiser if you catch them on a broadside. Now here we have a Pensacola. He's given broadside. I switch over, I fire my first rounds that had HE loaded. Now I'm going to try and catch him with some AP damage here. He's still giving broadside. Waiting for that reload. Shots are out. And of course he turns at the last second. And I get zero damage. Now granted only two of them kind of, sh you know, scraped off of the side of a ship. And so here's torpedoes. Okay, two sets of three. And I'm looking at a mini-map, and I see one, two of the four unaccounted for destroyers down below A. And I think I saw a third one down there as well. So this is probably still Mr. Hatsuhara, because he is still alive. I'm going to take a wild guess that it's him. 
So I know that there's a destroyer in the area. Now the Turpins is out away from that island that Pensacola just got lit up by somebody. And it certainly wasn't me. I'll see if I can get the killing shot though. Do I get it? Yes I do. And there's the Hatsahara. Okay, good guess. So the Hatsahara is nearby. He did just fire his torpedoes. I'm not particularly worried about him torping me as I come around this corner. It's very unlikely that he has the uh, torpedo reload module on. Most people do not have that. Unfortunately, I did have to change sides because of the island, and so most of my guns are not forward to bear. But I did get my friend the Turpets uh, <laughs> back on fire again with my opening salvo. And let's see if we can help kill this Hatsahara. Nice little blind shot into the smoke. Damn, there's another kill. Okay. Rolling right along. Now, about this time, I'm realizing that I've overextended myself. Um, if you notice, my team really just kind of left me high and dry. Uh, specifically, our two battleships. They are way, way in the back of the map. And here I am, all by myself. A fairly squishy cruiser against two battleships. So, um, yeah, we're, we're just going to have to do the best of what we've gotten ourselves into here. I would like to get this island in between us and take that down to only one battleship. I do launch my torpedoes off. I've exposed a bit too much of my broadside here, so let's try and get out of the way. Yeah, okay, made that torpedoes mixed again. Get some more shots off. Okay, got the island in between me and, and that war spites. Now I'm only fighting one. Turpitz is back on fire once more. He has probably got to be seething in rage right now. And just keep those shells firing out. The shells do have pretty good velocity, so they're, they're, they're pretty easy to aim. And they do very respectful damage. I mean, you got to remember, he's a tier higher than me. Uh... And got another fire on him. I think that's three on him right now. And you can just see his hit points whittling down. At this point, I'm, I'm doing the cool guy. Doesn't look at his own explosions. He died. Didn't even have to keep an eye on him. There was no way he was going to get away from... You, you can't run away from fires, you know? <laughs> Opening salvo on the war spite. 4.7k and a fire for my trouble. I think I'm going to get his attention pretty quick here. Yep, he's got two, his back two guns fire or uh, aimed at me. There's another fire and another four and a half thousand damage. He's still got those guns pointed. Okay, here comes the shots. I'm nose on. Ow! I still took five thousand damage. At least I missed those shots. Okay. Now I got another fire on, but he put him out. Okay, so his fires are out. So what do we do? We just set him right back on fire. <laughs> oh, man. And you just see the damage l racking up. So overall, I really like the uh, the Miyoko. It's a solid ship, but it has a different play style than uh, my typical U.S. battleships. Um, he's going to try and chip me away, but he, he's... No, there's another fire. Ouch, another shot, but he, he's not walking away from this. Even if he kills me now, the fires are going to take him and uh, we'll weed in this game. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.